Good morning, everybody. Welcome into your Freight Waves Now community spotlight on this Wednesday. I'm Kaylee Nix, and we are here with Truck Tech's Alan Adler, updating you on the latest goings on around the truck tech space. Alan, thanks for joining us. And we've got another great episode on the way today, taking an inside look at Cummins once again. Tell us a little bit about your visit. Well, we had an opportunity to go to uh, Jamestown, New York. Uh, it was interesting. There's supposed to be a media program. Didn't it quite work out that way? They had some mechanical troubles. They couldn't do that, but I was already there. And so um, had an opportunity to spend time with uh, Sean Rico, who is the plant manager at the Cummins Engine Plant. This is the largest employer in that part of uh, New York, Southwest New York, and uh, really got a good look at the plant inside where they're building um, what uh, part, part of what they call the Helms Project, which is the uh, multiple fuel type engines um, for their new 15 liter uh, uh, engine. They'll do diesel, they'll do natural gas, they'll do hydrogen all around 2028. But the idea is that it's the ba same basic engine with different heads on top, to handle different fuels. And uh, we've talked about this and written about it, but the opportunity to get in the plant, always one of my favorite things to do, um, worked out really well. Yeah, we've had a lot of conversation about how this is kind of a really innovative solution because it offers a lot of flexibility for fleets, especially as they're kind of picking and choosing how deeply they want to stick their toe into this alternative fuel kind of ecosystem. When it comes to production space and kind of timeline and what they're looking at, how does the facility look as far as getting things on the line and out to their customers? Well, you know, a number of things that, that come up in today's episode, I think, are, are interesting. One is, you know, there's a term that was used actually in the auto industry a number of years ago uh, called order to delivery. And it, the idea was to cut way down on the amount of time it took to get a vehicle, in this case, they were cars, uh, out of a plant and over to a dealer to deliver to a customer. And there was talk about doing it in, you know, a few days and things like that. Well, one of the things that we learned at, at the Cummins plant is that they actually have an eight day turnaround between building an engine and getting it to the company, in this case, it would be an OEM, that's going to install it in a truck. Now, that doesn't mean that truck will be in the customer's hands in eight days. But from a Cummins perspective, it does because their customers are the OEMs and they build more engines than anybody. And they build them for everybody pretty much out there in terms of offering a kind of a second OE, uh, OEM option. You know, uh, Daimler and Volvo and others all do their own engines, but they also buy from Cummins and make them an, uh, you know, make them available. So, uh, you know, with probably a third of the overall uh, class eight engine build. Um, you know, Cummins is, is a major, major player in this space. What they're engaged in now is the new version of what they call the X-15, the, the uh, all new version. And what they're doing is that they are, like you indicated, they're looking at how are companies going to adjust to getting ready for what will probably be an electric uh ecosystem eventually, but maybe they're not ready to go there yet. So is natural gas a good option? Maybe it is. You're going to get 20% uh, lower uh, you know, uh, CO2 emissions straight away. You could do even better if you're using renewable natural gas. So that's the first engine that's on the line, and that's on the line now um, in in uh, in Jamestown, New York. And then uh, all after that will be the, the next version of the diesel, which is sort of the the, the big number engine, that's the one that most people will be ordering. They have a, a dedicated line on two shifts for that in Janestown. Um, the the 12 liter natural gas, excuse me, the 15 liter natural gas, they have a 12 now. The 15 liter natural gas engine uh, comes into play because they have a second line where they do a lot of different uh, builds and things like that. If they get enough penetration and orders and things like that for natural gas, they could move it on to that main line. But a lot of flexibility in the plant. They tend to use more overtime than they do, say, adding a third shift because they don't really need that third shift, but but they can flex, uh, you know, using overtime there. So obviously our bigger OEMs are their main customers, but when it comes to some of the smaller guys who are starting to get into this kind of flex fuel space is the way that I'm gonna call it. Are they looking at expanding any partnerships with anybody in this truck trucking space particularly that have made you kind of go like, wow, I didn't expect them to go with Cummins, but we're excited to see that they are. Well, it's interesting. It happened and now it's kind of over already. And that was with Hylion because Hylion partnered with Cummins to certify their 12 liter natural gas engine to use with the uh, in the hyper truck, which you may remember, we wrote quite a bit about that. It's been shelved at this point. They're not making it now. The uh, Hylion, the startup, has switched over to doing um, uh, 
generators, uh, multi-fuel generators for stationary use. Um, they really weren't getting enough orders and enough interest in their hyper truck to, to go forward, but they did partner with Cummins on certifying that 12 liter natural gas engine. Then Cummins said, oh, well, we have this 15 liter we're gonna bring in and uh, you probably have to start over. And in fact, that's what would have had to happen. So it would have been a lot of repetitive work and uh, you know, Highland didn't go there. As far as other um, partnerships, you know, Highland, excuse me, Cummins had a 10 year uh, partnership with Westport Fuels to make uh, natural gas uh, engines and systems. Um, that went away at the end of 2021 and uh, Cummins has since uh, tied in with um, uh, Momentum Fuels, which is a part of Rush Enterprises. And so they're doing systems, natural gas systems uh, with uh, Rush. And then, uh, you know, also this engine though, honestly is most applicable, the natural gas engine to the folks at uh, like Hexagon Agility, which makes the tanks and the systems as well. So uh, a lot going on in the natural gas space. There is thought that this will be a transition uh, type engine uh, for, you know, it'll grow a lot in penetration over the next few years versus sort of that one to 2% that natural gas occupies today. The thought is that as people start making choices, uh, especially with the renewable natural gas and the potential, you know, zero uh, emissions from that, at least on a CO2 basis, that that might become very popular. So there's a lot of enthusiasm around that particular application. And again, that'll be the first one out of the Jamestown plant. So Alan, last question for you has to do with the leadership over at Cummins because Jennifer Rumsey just celebrated her two year anniversary leading the, the company as of August 1st. And this has been kind of a flagship program for her, right? These kind of drop in fuel solutions and this kind of migration to the flex fuel ecosystem. Any thoughts from her or other Cummins leadership on the direction of the company so far and how it's, how it's reflecting on her performance? Well, I think she's been through, we, we wrote about her uh, and we had her on the show just a few months ago uh, when we were down in, in Columbus, uh, Indiana, and she sat with us in their studio, which was great. Um, and we talked about a lot of these things, especially, you know, kind of her, at the time, maybe her first 18 months in, in, in the role, she was just coming off a very difficult thing that was going to happen. It had been telegraphed for about four years, and that was a pretty big a civil fine over some engines that were made for Stellantis um, that it did not properly uh, account for emissions. And so, you know, Cummins paid a big fine, but she has done, I think, overall a pretty pretty good job uh, in terms of a lot of rebranding there. You may remember that Accelera by Cummins is still kind of a new name, but that's what they're calling all of their new power uh, stuff, which would be, you know, fuel cells, electrification, you know, fully integrated uh, electric chassis and things like that. Uh, they've also, you know, coined this term helms, which refers to the, uh, to the, you know, low emission and, and high performance engines uh, with different fuels. Um, they've done a few other things in that kind of branding space. So they're trying to set themselves up in such a way, I think that they're more understandable under her uh, time as CEO, but probably work that began before that, they spun off the uh, filtration division, at, uh, you know, which makes uh, um, material for engines. They spun that off into a separate company. Um, and so she, she's been very, very busy. They're also absorbing, you know, Meritor, which is a $3.3 billion acquisition that, again, not while she was CEO, but right afterwards, she was responsible for overseeing the integration of Meritor. So a lot of things happening at Cummins under her leadership. She's been there. She's a, a veteran, uh, come up, came up through the engineering side of the house and uh, clearly, you know, is, uh, you know, obviously quite aware as well as directing what's happening now. Well, we'd love to see that success and are excited to see her continue to be successful into the future with programs like this and many more. Alan, thanks for joining us this morning. Of course, we'll find Truck Tech the show later on this afternoon and we'll catch the newsletter on Friday. Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thank you. You too.